bespoke radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. Listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 Fade to Black. Bespoke radio for the masses. Today's Tuesday, July 12th. 195 days into the new year. 171 days left. We are live from a bunker. Somewhere in downtown Burbank, California, I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States, hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planet. I'm your also humble host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? Great show last night. It's going to continue tonight. Last night, David Wilcock. Tonight, Corey Good is going to be here. That's right. He's going to update us on the whistleblower front and his new web project. We're going to talk about all of that tonight. TrueDisclosure.org. Tomorrow night, Lori McDonald is going to be here, and she is going to talk about all of the stress in the world and how to undo it. Yeah, continue the On Ascension Week. Thursday night's Fader Night open lines with John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom. Call in number is 323-825-5045. We did get to some calls last night with uh, David Wilcock. It was awesome. And we will try to do the same tonight with Corey. Get ready. Buckle up. It's going to be one of those nights tonight. You can follow us on Twitter at Radio. That's what you want to do. Hashtag F2B is the sandbox. And also, you can follow uh, Corey at Blue Avions. And all of those Twitter links are up and active on our feed right now at JChurch Radio. Hashtag F2B. All right. Made it to the bunker in time. More on that in just a bit. You can email throughout the show tonight, Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Any questions or comments during the show tonight for anybody that is new to the show, use the hashtag F2BQ. That's fade to black questions. Hashtag F2BQ. All right. And we will make it all happen. Yes. The questions are coming in now. I've got email. It's all good. All right. Wow. Okay. So um, in here, by the way, Twitter has just crashed. Yeah, man, you got to love this. Okay, so I'm just going to do this in real time. Let's just get that back up and active. Yeah, Twitter was on fire last night, man. Oh, Lord. All right. Yeah, it was a great show last night. It was a great conversation. And uh, tonight we're going to continue that with Corey. Corey is one of the smartest, brightest guys that I know. And hanging out with him like we have over the last year, both on and off the show, um, he is just a very smart, very bright guy, and I can't wait to get him in here tonight and and go one-on-one. And I just got off the phone with him, and he's fired up. He's ready to go and looking forward to it. And we, um, we uh, got to hang out, uh, Corey and uh, David, uh, with the rest of the Fader Knots back at Contact in the Desert. And Corey, you know, not only did he just interface with everybody but he, you know him opening up and just listening to him and the presentations that went down at contact in the desert it was one of those things where i just sat there and went man i need to capture this 
this has got to get out there. It's got to get on the air. And this is our first opportunity tonight. And he's got a bunch of stuff going on with the launch of uh, TrueDisclosure.org. He's been very busy. We've been working with him uh, with the help of the launching of the site since last week. It is active. You can go and check it out, TrueDisclosure.org. And we will get all of those links up. I'm looking now. There it is. Uh, you know what? That's going to bang a retweet right there. Thank you, Allison. There is the website. You can go and check it out. Oh, Holly. Look at Holly. Holly Cook is in the house tonight. How you doing, Holly? Just posted a picture of herself with a Corey and her better half, Mark. There you guys go. All right. I'm fired up. I am ready to go. Now, let's uh, get a few things out of the way. You can uh, support the show by supporting our sponsors. You can start with Life Change Tea. Get the tea.com. Just click on the banner at Jimmy Church Radio. Use the promo code Jimmy. That's all you need to do. You can use that either over the phone or online when you check out J-I-M-M-Y, Jimmy, and you will get yourself free shipping. Ronnie has always got specials going on over at the specials page, and I think there are specials on the home page. And you can also go to our sponsor, Studio Dome, and uh, their package just for the Fader Knots is a TWS True Wireless Stereo Bluetooth technology, the latest technology, two stereo speakers, SBB2s, power supplies, hard shell case, $129, and you can take your high fidelity everywhere you go. Use the promo code JCRTWS also when you check out, and that will also get you free shipping. Truly the best deal on the net. All right, we're less than a month away from the Awareness Life Expo at the Crown Plaza Hotel. I just got email from somebody that said, hey, man, what's uh, the expo? I want to go. Can you say it again? I was just like, dude, why don't you just back up the show or replay it? But anyway, Awareness Life Expo. The links are at jimmychurchradio.com. We have an appearances section on the right-hand side of the page. Just click on it, and there you go. Richard Dolan's going to be there. Lori McDonald, she's going to be with us tomorrow night. Victor Camacho, Patty Greer, Holly Cook, Len Caston. Awareness Life Expo. That is August 13th and 14th. August 12th, that Friday, we're going to be broadcasting live, fade to black, that Friday, from a special VIP party Friday night. So you're going to want to get tickets for that. Get over there. It's going to be a great weekend. I'm looking forward to it. All right, let's get this show cracking. Today, Topher Grace is 38 years old. And before you go, dude, Topher Grace. Yeah, Topher Grace. And check out the movie American Ultra. It's all about the MK Ultra program uh, with uh, the ultimate Illuminati guy. Jesse Eisenberg is uh, plays the MK Ultra uh, stooge. Great movie. Toe for Grace is really gnarly. Also today, John Petrucci is 49. One of the great guitar players. You know, dream theater. Love John. Great. He was ranked number 17th all-time guitar player in Guitar World magazine. All right. On this day in history, 1990, Boris Yeltsin resigns from the Communist Party. Fader fact, check this out. It's been vetted. Mormons believe that the U.S. Constitution is a divinely inspired document. <laughs> there you go. All right. Tonight, Corey Good is with us. He's going to be here in a few short minutes. He's going to update us on all things whistleblower. We're going to do that tonight. We're going to talk about his latest research, his contacts, and all of the news that we need to know on the Blue Avion front. Not only that, but his new website is out. It is called truedisclosure.org. The links are up. Go check it out. Tomorrow night, Lori McDonald is here. And of course, Thursday, Open lines, Fader Night with John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom. The call in number tonight, as always, is 323 825 5045. All right. Now, uh, before we get to Corey, uh, uh, this morning I went over and, and, uh, 
uh, taped a, a few more segments for this new series that we're doing with History Channel. More on that when I can talk about it. It'll be a, a couple of weeks. And I was talking to the, the studio heads over there, and they're ready to go. Logos are done, and, and we've uh, you know shot so much. We're almost ready to go. So when they go and, and, and launch it and, and go public with it, then I can talk about it. But I'll say this. So uh, this morning, get up and, uh, and go and start taping. And what the, the content of the show doesn't matter, but going through that today and speaking with everybody on the set and, and who is involved with the project, um, conspiracy, which I started, uh, I started about two years ago with this, but conspiracy is the new normal. It truly is. And the the folks on the set today wanted to come up to, uh, and speak to me about different conspiracies and things that are going on, certainly with uh, the last week in the United States and that. And these were folks that don't run in our circle. OK, and so it really made me stop and think about what the message is that I have been trying to get out there, which is conspiracy is the new norm. And what I mean by that, and this is a very serious point that I need to drive home. If you listen to this show, great. You guys get it. But for those that don't listen to this show and and other shows that deal with um, the, the alternative news and, and alternative theories and in history and so forth, like this, those folks really, when they watch the news today and talk to their friends about things that are going on, really are stopping the belief system. They don't believe anything that they're fed anymore. They don't believe the newspapers. They don't believe the magazines. They don't believe the Internet. They don't believe anything, the mainstream media. And and so the conversation was was pretty wild today because these folks knew a little bit about me and, and what I do. But because they knew a little bit about that, they wanted to know if their fears were correct. And I sat and answered questions and engaged in these conversations today. And what it says to me is that we, us, are winning. They are very, very concerned. Conspiracy is indeed the new normal. The conversation varied today, not only with politics and what's going on with the election, because they don't buy what they're being fed. I, I just found this amazing. It was just like I was talking to all of you, except it wasn't all of you. This was just like the general public. You know, they they don't know what Coast to Coast is. They don't know what Fade to Black is. They don't know who Alex Jones is. You know, I, obviously him being the far, far, far way out there guy. But, but conspiracy nonetheless. Conspiracy is the new norm. It seems to me that if if I just get a catering person coming up to me today and and wanting to know that if everything that they see in the mainstream media is is a lie, then what do they do about it? Isn't that interesting? Now, one of one of the people that I uh, uh, was working with today and will continue to. Uh, worked and, and continues to work. I, I can't really disclose too much. CNN and headline news, a reporter. And we sat and talked about all of this. And, and I can't say a whole lot of the personal part of the conversation because it's, you know, everybody's got a career, but let's just say that it was confirmation about the talking heads out there. And we were talking about some other people, not on CNN. Um, from another guy that came up today about uh, Rachel Maddows, which I don't listen to or follow, but about just the the fakeness of everything that is going on out there. And it really caused me to stop. One of the people, and I know I'm I'm driving this home, but you need to really listen to what I'm trying to say, came up to me and asked me, 
what the shadow government was. And I said, excuse me? <laughs> the shadow government? I don't even think I've said that on this show, right? And I said, well, what do you mean? Well, you know, I just heard some references about the shadow government and that there's a government that's actually running our government and somebody that is that tells Obama what to do. You know, what is that? And I had to sit down and 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 pick this apart. But is this where is this where this country is going? Is that where it's at? And I'm proud if it is. And that's my point. If that is really where we are at, are we at a, a, a tipping point, a breaking point where the trust is gone? I mean, the trust, not the uh, let's go and have anarchy in the streets. Alex Jones, you know, the trust is gone. The elitists. No, I'm not going there. But what if your friends, the people that you work with that don't talk about this to you publicly, but what they are thinking about is everything that they saw in the NBC Nightly News last night. They didn't believe any of it. That's a crazy point to be, isn't it? When, when we set up the Constitution and when we the Founding Fathers sat down and, and tried to work things out on a fresh, you know, clean slate of paper, and, and have a fresh start for everybody and the things that they had issues with that they didn't want to have anymore in their lives. One of them was freedom of speech, freedom of the press. Now think about that for a second. They wanted to make sure that the press and us were part of the system of checks and balances. That was the goal, that the press would monitor politicians in the army, in the military, and they would monitor everything and report on it freely without the fear of, of, of jail, right? Of penalty. That was the goal. Today, and, and that was always it, man, freedom of the press, freedom of the press, freedom of the press, we the people, right? And today, we don't even trust the press. Somebody uh, uh, said today in a conversation, literally, like out of the blue, said, you know, I don't know if I buy into the control of the media and the press that is being talked about out there. I said, well, who's talking about it? Well, my friends. Who are your friends? What? Who are you listening to? Well, it's just what we're talking about. You know, and I wanted to know, where are you getting this information? No, it's just that that's what we're talking about now. And isn't that interesting? I'm talking about somebody that was like a mom. I mean, outside of our circles. So last night with this conversation with David, when we touched upon this, that, you know what? Just maybe those dark forces are on the run. About a year ago. I had mentioned on this show, and I wanted to make sure that I mentioned this tonight, that the Internet is something that those dark forces do not want because it is completely 100% out of their control. And if you want the Internet away from them and out of their control, you can make sure that you are not disturbed. There are ways around it. And you certainly have the deep web, the dark web. I mean, completely unregulated. And so the sources of information now, when you go and you hear something, you can go and pop it in to Google and go do a search and not only have YouTube at your access, people that are making videos out there, but you have blogs, you have that, you have alternative news sites, and you have ways to double check information. This has never happened before. Let me give you a clear example of how cool this is. 30 years ago, you're sitting around with your family and you're watching a movie and you go, oh, wow. Gene Hackman's in this movie. Man, how old was Gene Hackman when this movie came out? Okay, at that point, at that point, I know it sounds crazy today, but at that point, what did you do? You did absolutely nothing. You guys sat around and talked about it. 
But your only choice, you had two, was to get up and go to your encyclopedia set, if you had one in the house, and crack that open and hope to find Gene Hackman in there and all of the movies that he's ever been in. That's that's it. Or you went down to the library. That's what you did. That's it. Today, I know it sounds so elementary, but today, that is just what we all do now. It doesn't matter what the littlest piece of information is that you want. You go and pick up your cell phone, and now you have the entire world at your fingertips. As Dick Tracy as that sounds, your five-year-old knows how to do this today. And that is what is here. Never before. So the dark forces out there know that we can check on anything. Any fact, any news bit, any news reel, any factoid, any quote, anything that they want to say. You can go and double check anything. And go double check. And that's where we are today. So the masses now. And if you think about who's got cell phones in this country and who knows how to use Google in this country, which is nearly everybody, not the, not the privileged few, not the one percenters that have access to this beautiful thing, but everybody. And so now when they hear something on the news, and it doesn't matter if it's ISIS or it's Hillary or Trump, Whatever it is, and like I've said so many times, it could be about cheese. It could be about cheese. Cheese is killing you. Oh, it is. Why? Boom. Done on the internet, and you find out that cheese isn't killing you, and somebody's lying to you. Conspiracy is the new normal. Everybody has the ability now to double check what is being spoon fed to them. It's a crazy, beautiful time to be alive. And back to the reason why all of this is really on the front burner. Because the last year, this country has been force fed the darkness of racism. And we all agree that somewhere there's always going to be somebody that's outside the box, outside the circle. Okay, sure, there are racists out there. It is such a minuscule part of society that when we hear about this, we're, we're like, wait a minute, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know about, I'm not racist. Who's racist? And we're being force fed that by the media. By the media, by the media, this darkness, this darkness. When we know that really that's not the case, right? Trying to cause these problems. The problem, the real problem, is we've got issues with the man and with and, and the police and the way that they're trained. No question about it. The, the numbers that we are being force fed, and I don't care what they are. You know, white cop killing black people okay sure of course it happens we know this but what about white cop killing white person what about black cop killing mexican guy or black on black or white on white or whatever where are those numbers because they exist too and and i don't want to hear that oh well you know it's it, but it's still a problem it's all a problem but the media won't spin it that way because they want to cause this darkness who is causing the darkness and where it goes above that boom i had an answer today from everybody coming up wanting to know about the shadow government running running washington and running the media it was crazy so i don't know where where they are getting their information from but that is the conversation on the streets today. Conspiracy is truly the new norm. All right. And tonight we're going to talk about all of that with Corey. Last night with David discussing this in, in, a, in not only a pragmatic way, but and, and, and David, I could tell last night, wanted to talk. 
He wanted to just get his mind out there. And he did that. But when you start discussing this in other ways that make a lot of sense, it just makes me back up and go, you know, I think we are winning. I really do. And when I say I walk around with flowers hanging out of my pot, I'm the glass is half full guy. Today, I feel like that. I really, really do. I think we are winning the battle. And with that, Corey Good is here. Tomorrow night, Lori McDonald is going to be here. And then Thursday night's going to be Fader Night Open Lines. Tomorrow is going to be an inter interesting day in history because the British Prime Minister, David Cameron, is set to resign. And uh, Home Secretary Theresa May is about to step in. Now, she's going to be the second female prime minister in British history. What does this mean for the future of Great Britain? The world is changing. This, this breakdown of, uh, of the European Union and the potential of the domino principle coming into play there is something that we need to all kind of take a look at and focus. One of the things that I've always talked about when it comes to the European Union is that if you open up all of the borders and you've got and you get a you know you introduce the euro and start to do what they have done and i understand the reasons why but certainly the bigger picture was always the new world order one government and instituting that in europe was something that was scary but 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 it goes beyond that for me the, the new world order is one thing. One world government is one thing. The Illuminati, the cabal, and who is running things. That Yes, that comes into play. But you know what else is lost in that is individuality. You know, France needs to stay France, man. Spain needs to stay. Greece needs, needs to stay Greece. The Italians need to be Italian. And, and that, that thing, that culture will start to eventually go away. And that, to me, is more damaging than a, a one-world government. You know, there's something about being able to go to Italy and see some guy on a Vespa go, ciao, right? You don't want that to go away. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Short break, and when I come back, we'll be joined with David, or David, Corey Good. I almost said David Wilcock. Corey Good's going to be here tomorrow night. Lori McDonald, Thursday night, open lines, fader night with John Rappaport. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I'll be right back. Listening to Jimmy Church fade to black. Fade to black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. What's up, revolutionaries? It's me, Jimmy Church. Do you have an IRS or state tax issue? Well, I did, and I called national tax experts. My problems were fixed, done, fini, and man, I got to tell you, it was a relief. National tax experts are a recognized tax office that services clients in all 50 states. It doesn't matter where you live. Give them a call. I'm telling you, they take the time to understand each and every client's individual financial status as well as their financial goals. And that's exactly what you need, my brother, when you're taking on the evil three letter. So, seriously. Give them a call today at 1-877-909-5444. Again, 1-877-909-5444. Or go check out their website, www.nattaxexperts.com. That's N-A-T-T-A-X-E-X-P-E-R-T-S.com. Tell them Jimmy sent you. 
Hi, folks. Ronnie here reminding you that June is Health Awareness Month, sponsored by Get the Tea. Dot com. Many of you have heard our tea commercial, maybe visited the website, but haven't committed because, well, you just don't know. Skeptical. We understand. Just to remind you, our tea is not just tea. In fact, very little tea. Life Change Tea is a unique blend of eight different herbs, removing intruders that attack your health. You brew our tea to make the concentrate, you add water, and put in the fridge. Two eight-ounce glasses a day, and life will be good. Visit us at GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. And this month is lots of fun stuff with Health Awareness Month. You could be picked and receive your order absolutely free. You never know. Read the testimonies and try our products. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. And for great health tips, visit my YouTube channel at Health Matters Now, where you can learn about health tips and how products work on your body. Join me, GetTheTea.com. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Chase Kletsky with Fate Magazine Radio, and you're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA digital broadcast station, where the Fader Knots rock. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Bass, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. You can follow me right now on Twitter at J Church Radio. Very simple. That's what you want to do. Use the hashtag F2B for the sandbox. You can follow Corey at Blue Avions. All the links are up on Twitter right now. Twitter's on fire. Oh, man. Look at uh, the chat rooms. Yes, everything is a go. Let's do this. Corey Good was identified as an intuitive empath with precognitive abilities. He was recruited through one of the MyLab programs at the young age of six. He trained and served in the MyLab program from 1976 to 1986, 87. And towards the end of his time as a MyLab, he was assigned to an IE support role for rotating earth delegate seats. He shared, uh, it was shared by secret Earth government groups, by the way, in a human type ET Super Federation Council. During his 20 year service, he had a variety of experiences and assignments, including the Intruder Intercept Interrogation Program, assignment to the ASSR ISRV Auxiliary Specialized Space Research Interstellar Class Vessel, and much more. He is in direct physical contact with the Blue Avions, the Sphere Being Alliance, who have chosen him as a delegate to interface with multiple ET federations and councils on their behalf, a liaison with the SSP Alliance Council, and to deliver important messages back to us. Tonight, we're going to talk to Corey about his new web project, uh, which is truedisclosure.org. We're going to talk about whistleblowers and the move towards enlightenment and disclosure. His websites are sphereBeingAlliance.com and truedisclosure.org. And I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black our good friend, Corey Good. Corey, good evening. Good evening to you. How are you, man? Doing pretty well, doing pretty well. It's uh, been pretty hot down here in the Dallas area, so, you know, just trying to stay cool. Yeah, there you go. Well, stay by the pool, man, and uh, and I wish I had one. And right now we're doing the same thing. It is a heat wave rolling through Southern California. It, you know what? what's funny here is it lasts for about two weeks, and that's our complaint because the other 50 weeks out of the year, it's pretty bleep and nice. And so I really can't complain about the weather because the rest of the country goes through, you know, the four seasons and all the stuff that they deal with. And we've got it pretty good out here. And it's kind of the same for you in Texas. Right. Are you guys still dealing with the drought or is that 
has it recovered any? No, man. Chemtrails have taken care of that. <laughs> right. You know what's <laughs> we, You know, it, Corey. It's funny that you bring that up because about a year ago, and I'm not making this up. About a year ago, I get this little blip in the local news. Right, the local news. And I'm on a local news website and, you know, just checking out the community stuff. And I see this little article that says a one year agreement has been reached with the city of Burbank to install 10 cloud seeding stations in the mountains to to <laughs> to to combat the drought. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. And I open up the article and sure enough. It was it was a five hundred thousand dollar contract with this private company, and they're literally doing cloud seeding. And you know what's happened in the last year? Rain, <laughs> nothing wow. but rain. Is that insane? Well, maybe uh, maybe David Wilcock will let him uh, put one of those stations uh, behind his house up there on Topanga. Yeah. You now see. Now check this out. He doesn't reap the benefits that we do on on the east end of the valley. Um, it's, you know, he's about 30, 40 miles from us and it, it is no joke. Now, this is the other thing that I thought about, and I should have uh, talked to David about this is I think it was a masking, if you will, like a false flag to the chemtrails, right? They could say that it's the cloud seeding program when in actuality, it's the spraying that is going up in uh, the upper atmosphere. And that's that's my way of looking. You know, you never believe the news, right? And to have this blurb in there, like this blatant admission to altering the weather for us, for the good of the drought, I, I just saw through that. But wasn't that an interesting thing to have in the paper? Wasn't on the news, wasn't spoken about. It was just like out out there so they could say that Oh, we talked about this, you know, you know what I mean? Right. In this little spot in the paper. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it's pretty interesting what's popping up in the mainstream media recently. Yeah, what, do you, what do you think, uh, before we get uh, feet first into uh, uh, what's going on in your world, this, this last couple of weeks, and certainly the last year with the darkness, with, you know, trying to cause this racial divide in the country, and the last week has been really, really bad. What do you think is going on with that? To, to be honest, I think it's a part of what the Blue Avians, uh, the message they delivered to me the last time I uh, spoke to them. Um, they said that individuals and groups are, are being forced to deal with uh, our karma in, uh, during these uh, high influxes of this uh, energy that's coming in through the sun and um, you know, the, through you know, the galaxy is now uh, pouring onto our, our planet and our whole solar system. And you know, you know, there's, you know, everyone has their ideas about you know the uh, the status of uh, the racial divide in, in America. But you know, I have a little bit. You know, I'm part Native American and part Anglo, so I have a little bit different view on things than most people. And you know, I think that we're going to be forced to deal with something that happened generations ago and that most Caucasians don't feel that tied to, or they don't want to, but as a country, we're going to have to deal with, you know, the, the racial divide that is there, or we're not going to be able to move forward. And, and I don't think, and I, I agree with what you're saying about the attempt at that. I don't know. I just don't feel the the racial divide that the media is telling us it, it, that exists. But you guys in, in Dallas, well, let me just ask you, how is the city doing today? Well, <clears throat> Dallas, you know, I, I grew up here, and Dallas is a pretty big melting pot. So, um, you know, it's it was unfortunate, very unfortunate that it happened at all, but that it happened to the uh, Dallas Police Department because, uh, you know, They've they've done a lot to improve things, and um, you know so things. There's there's a lot of you just feel the sadness hanging over the over the whole city, but you don't feel you know you don't feel any fear or anything like that. It's just uh, people are anxious and uh, sad. 
And how is the how is the local Dallas news treating this too as well? I mean, is there all of this talk about racism and racial divide that you get from the the national news? Are they treating it the same way in Dallas? Well, some are, but uh, I I posted on on my Facebook site today. Uh, they, there was, in Dallas, they had Black Life Black Lives Matter group that was getting ready to do a protest, and then an opposing group. And they were videotaping them coming together. They did like a prayer for the, I guess, the people that who had who had passed uh, in the two states where the shootings had occurred. Right. And they, you know, they all hugged and they were they were coming together and unifying. And you you don't see that on the mainstream, uh, you know, national news, but it was being shown locally here, and it, it's been very inspiring. Yeah, and and I thought about. Uh, and I, I kind of want to stay on this for a second because I am very concerned about the darkness that is pulling us down. And with with Dallas, with the with the uh, Black Lives Matter uh, uh, protest, if you want to call it a protest that went on during uh, that was going on when the police shootings happened, uh, I didn't see angst. Right. I didn't see you know, bottles being thrown at the police, for instance, you know, and, and instigators trying to cause this. And then suddenly when the, when the gunfire broke out, there was panic because the mood was a good mood and it was broken with the gunfire. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, I do. And also if you look at the videotape, you'll see a full, the full spectrum of, uh, of, of the different races that were out there supporting this, uh, the, the Black Lives Matter protest. And it was very peaceful. And, you know, everyone was getting along just fine. They were even getting, the cops were getting along with the protesters. And, right. You know, then this occurred. And the genuine fear that was suddenly on everybody's face uh, in, in the videos that, that I have seen, that we've all seen, um, it, it's heartbreaking because that's not what they were there for. Hence, back to my discussion about darkness, and that is what is 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 here now. You know, it's this darkness, and I think that the only way, Corey, that we can start to avoid this and not allow it to affect us emotionally, because that's what they want, right? They want us to be, you know, dragged down by this is to quite simply unplug from the machine. You know, stop watching the news. Stop, because that is what's causing this emotional shift that is out there. And if we give in to that, well, the dark players win, don't they? They do. What um, What can we do? I, You know, I've suggested to unplug from the machine. Is there something else that we can do to combat uh, this, this darkness? Well, it's going to be one of the obvious answers for a lot of your audience. It is, it's very important to ground yourself and to, to meditate on a regular basis to get yourself, you know, grounded and, and to reset your frequency. So it's not, you know, dealing with all the crossover from other people's energy and from the negative information that we're being bombarded with. Do you feel when, when you, not only when you go to the council, but also, uh, you know, the inner earth here too, as well, do they have those same issues with, with racism? That, that's a little bit hard to answer because they, they are not, they don't have animosity or uh, negative thoughts or, or energy towards other races per se, but they have ideas about this great genetic experiment here on the earth. And, and, and what do you mean by that? Well, back when they, all these different groups were starting their own genetic little experiments or, or, you know, little groups, they were telling and instilling religion in them and also the various knowledge, different bits of knowledge that they were imparting to them. Right. They also imparted to them that you need to not mix your genetic line with any other. And uh, so, you know, that's something that's gone way, way, way back. And, uh, you know, it, it's also been 
a part of uh, some of the, the racial and religious infighting problems as well. That's that's interesting. That, and, and are you saying that they, they actually had a problem with that at one point and they had to literally speak about it? Well, what what they had done is when they were giving the people religion, they were also instilling in them that as a part of their religion and their culture, that they should not uh, mix their uh, their blood, their chosen blood with any other blood on the planet they should keep their genetic line pure and that you know that's something that's gone gone way back with a lot of different groups you know it's you know people keeping their genetic line pure that's that a lot of that goes back to a lot of these uh, genetic farmer races that had come in and started all these different genetic programs that's 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 really interesting. And for those out there that are here for the first time, that are hearing you speak for the first time, um, when you let, let's go back a little bit. When you first started to get this kind of information um, handed to you, how did you how did you deal with it? I mean, not only is it probably shocking to the system at one point. But also, you have to uh, accept it and 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 learn and acquire the knowledge. How did you start to do that at such a young age? Well, uh, from from a very young age, I was being put into situations that most people my age would never even dream of. So I had already built up a pretty thick skin towards this type of information and, and these types of experiences. It had become, I guess, quasi normal to me. So it was, it was something that just, it, it was just something I grew in, or just it, it was a part, just a part of my experience. Uh, a lot of the information that was coming in was very, you know, disturbing at times. Some of the experiences were very disturbing, but you know, just like a person that uh, grows up in a family that has a lot of uh, issues and they have a lot of crazy stuff happening in our family. It just, you know, kind of becomes a part of your experience. Right. Right. And is there a version of, uh, and I've never asked you this before. Is there a ver do you have to change the information for, uh, for us to understand it? In other words, I mean, have you, have you grown into, you collect the information and then when you give it back to us, uh, do you change it some way so we could understand it? No, I, I report things pretty much verbatim. And uh, the only things that I change or remove are operational details that, uh, you know, need to be protected. So, such as, what do you mean? Well, you know, I if I, if there is a certain base, I will... Not I'll either not give the location of it, or uh, you know, not not give, or if I give the general location, I will not give exact location details. You know, just you know that that kind of thing. You, you leave out uh, uh, you know certain people's names. Right, 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 right. I've got you, um, and and that leads me to this next uh, point. I want to talk about the definition of a whistleblower. And with with the new website, True Disclosure, uh, that's a large part of the website. And and who is doing this? What is your definition of a whistleblower? My, my definition of a whistleblower is someone who is working within a system or a corporation and witnesses or experiences things that they know are wrong, and then they speak up and report it. And, you know, there's all different kinds of levels, people that are whistleblowers about uh, money not being spent right in a corporation or um, all the way up to the, this uh, cosmic issue that we've been discussing for or that I've been discussing for over a year now. Do you consider yourself a whistleblower? Because I, mean, I, I, I don't. So I want to hear, uh, do you consider yourself a whistleblower? I, I consider myself. I'm. I am blowing the whistle on the secret space program and my experiences in it. So yes. But yet. And, and, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. But, no, go ahead. Because I think you're also a conduit. 
right? You're 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 relaying information too as well. And so you, you know what I mean? I don't think that you I do. Yeah. yeah, I don't think that you feel like you're you should be imprisoned in other words, like you're breaking the law. No. And you know, that, that was the whole point of of them doing projects like they did ours is because there's no documentation, there's uh, there's no real trail there of you know our our parents didn't bring us to uh, Carswell Air Force Base and drop us off. We were being brought there without their knowledge. So you know, you know they they they've done things this way for a long time, and they know how they they know how to keep secrets. Um, I know that's hard to believe about the U.S. government being able to. Uh, yeah, right. secrets but in in these special access programs they they have got gotten the compartmentalization and the manipulation of assets down pat right 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 and so now being a liaison uh not only for the sphere being alliance and and the blue avions that's one thing but then you you're also nearly and i want you to help me clarify this a diplomat would you call yourself a diplomat I would. I, I I wish that I was a little bit better at it or a little bit more diplomatic at times. But under under the extreme circumstances, I think I've been as diplomatic as I could be. Right, right. And expand on that. I mean, if you uh, 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 expand, just expand on that. What do you mean by you wish you could be better? At being a diplomat, I, I think that's I got to hear this answer myself. Well, you know, I've I've talked a little bit about it before. I'm I'm pretty much, I'm I'm a very introverted person. I'm not a person that's in a room normally. I'm normally the quiet person in the room watching everyone. I'm not the person that wants the attention or craves the attention or even wants to get up in front of more than two or three people at a time talking. So, right. you know, me being I guess, chosen or picked to liaison information and, and be in front of uh, large groups of people is, uh, is, is definitely out of my comfort zone. But uh, I've, ha- I've had to overcome, you know, my weak speaking voice and my uh, introversion to, um, to do what I've done over the last year. Are you getting better at it? I don't know. You tell me. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'd get a little bit better. Yeah. Well, you know, I have uh, I've I've seen the change in you for one. Um, uh, and I've seen you speak, as you know, and uh, at this uh, I actually sat next to you uh, off to the side of the stage. And I want the audience to understand at that point. It was just myself, David, and and Corey on this stage. That was it, right? And I'm sitting down, and Corey and I are, are, you know, kind of nodding to each other throughout everything. But I have to say, Corey, for that many people in front of you, you know, a thousand people, you handled yourself really well. And I didn't see, uh, I didn't see any apprehension. I didn't see any stage fright. I and. And you handled it uh, really, really well. So I think uh, you're starting to grow into well, your you. own skin now. So- yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely was. I de- there was definitely stage fright. And this uh, in, in August at Mount Shasta, I'm uh, on August 26th or 28th. I'm doing a conference, um, and it's uh, you know that's going to be. I'm sure my heart will be in my throat the whole time. And, and and see, this is the other thing um, is you have the first five minutes on stage, right? That, you know, you've got it, you know, I, I pushed you out on the stage, so to speak, right? Or anybody, right? But the audience is there to listen to you and the vibe in the room and the brain power that is there is, is got to be relaxing because the, the, the next two hours for you, your feet were definitely on the ground. Can you tell the difference in the way that you're dealing with yourself? Yes, I can. I've I've gone through quite a metamorphosis over the last year, and uh, yeah, you know, and during you know when I first was when I was doing the cosmic disclosure in, in the beginning, I was going through bilateral rotator cuff and bicep sur- reconstructive surgeries. So a lot of the time, I was sitting there and I was in so much pain that it was unbelievable. Oh, I forgot about that. You had like a cast yeah. on. Yeah, that's right. 
Yeah, I, I completely forgot about that. Well, now, yeah, so, yeah and so there's a you know there was a big difference when I once I put the surgeries behind me too. You know, I, I, there were some changes that popped up that were pretty obvious in me. And and now, th- this is uh, this is what I find really important that now that you're you're out there and people are coming up to you, this is not what your personality is about. You didn't, you know, you didn't ask to be thrust into this kind of limelight, if you will. But you can't turn back now, like any whistleblower, right? <laughs> and now you're out, man. And yeah. but how is that? It, it, the the questions that that are hit with you and the people that come up to you now, um, and the questions that you have to deal with because you are in that position that they can't ask these questions from anybody else. You have to answer and they're going to hang on your every word. Now you have responsibility to go with this thrusting into the public eye. And how are you with that? I am actually getting better and it's, it's pretty easy dealing with the, the people in the crowds because like you said, they, they're extremely intelligent. They're asking very well thought out questions and they're just very positive vibed people. So, you know, it, it, it hasn't been difficult. The, the most difficult thing is to get through the crowd because everyone wants to talk to you for like, you know, 30 minutes and, you know, you, you just, you just can't do it if you want to meet everyone in the crowd. Yeah, I totally get that. I totally get that. And now well, we're going to hit a break here in just a second. And when we come back, We're going to talk about the launch of the new website, and I want to start to pick uh, the website apart a little bit and discuss with you uh, different sections of the site. How has it been going? How's the launch been? Any technical issues? Everything cool? You know, we've had the normal uh, couple little uh, technical issues, and uh, the content is still flowing onto the page. So the whistleblower uh, list is going to grow uh, dramatically over the next couple weeks. Can you tip? Uh, can you tip our hat in a certain direction? Who who else is uh, going to be added? Well, it's going to be a, a good deal. of The people from Stephen Greer's uh, disclosure project, I, think, I believe, it was in two thousand one, where he brought all the people up before the media and Congress. I believe uh, a lot of a lot of those people are going to be in it, and um there's going to be people also from the financial sector and, and whistleblowers from different sectors as well not not just whistleblowers on uh the et issue yeah and and we're going to talk about how you're actually doing this launch and the marketing behind it because it is very interesting this is fade to black our guest tonight is Corey good we're going to hit the ground running TrueDisclosure.org is the new website we're going to start to discuss that right after this short break Stay with us. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. You can follow me at Church J Church Radio on Twitter. You can follow Corey at Blue Avions. This is Fade to Black. More with Corey Good right after this short break. Stay with us. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. Hello, I'm Katini and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. Foodforliberty.com sells high-quality, storable foods from Numana. And right now, take advantage of our summer special. Purchase two family packs and we'll send you a pro pure water pitcher, a $70 value, free. This premium pitcher is ideal for use with just about